Hi guys, welcome to episode 9, which is adulting. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, you already know the drill, three things, three things, things. Yes. What are your three things? Okay, number one, um, the L'Oreal Paradise Glow in Peach Charm. It's like a lip balm, but in a lipstick form and it's supposed to be like a dior addict lip glow dupe i don't know i really like it though it like gives my uh lips a nice color um number two um the elizabeca it's a korean brand i like their hyaluronic acid memory cream it is so soft and i think if you wanted to layer it under or like use it as a primer for your makeup that's good too. It has like mm-hmm. a sticky finish. Um, and number three, um, my gallon water bottle jug. Ooh, yes, I like it because I hate refilling like small water bottles because I'm I just lazy. You. So I just like have the gallon around. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um. My three things, I don't know if I did this last week, but I picked up Bath and Body Works had their like, what is, I think $8 sale for like their candles, something like that. It was a really good steal for these because they're normally $26 and it makes the room smell so good. But the sale was amazing. So we got two of those. Been loving the caramel drizzle one. That's the one we're like burning. It's nice. I've never bought any candles from Bath and Body Works. You should. I have never bought anything from there. I've always been gifted it, so I was like, oh, yay. Yeah, you're like, don't have to go. I've never bought it. Dude, you should. should. (laughs) But don't buy them when they're $26. I think they only do the sale once a year, so next year, stock up. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, I know. But they smell good. Um, Trying to think of more. Oh, the next thing is, uh, where is it? Okay, so I feel like I always do makeup, but I just got this one, the Rare Beauty <sighs> Blush. I, like, hopped on the train. <laughs> it is so good. Like, literally, it's true. A tiny, tiny dot goes a long way. It's so pigmented and creamy and layering is... I don't even know what I'm saying. Layering is really nice with it. I need to hop on the train. Because you, you would like it. I know, but it's like 20 bucks. Literally, it's just like how I justify buying things. Oh, my last thing. Sorry, I'm all over the place this morning. Uh, Oh, I recently got the Summer Fridays like lip balm. We posted a TikTok about it. Um, And it is actually, okay, I will say, I feel like there could be some alternatives out there that are way cheaper and last longer. But also like the glossy bomb.com. That's a whole other thing. But the Summer Fridays one, it smells really good. And it does make my lips have like the perfect tint for. And I know you're just talking about this, but it's like finding the tint that works well on your skin tone is so important. So when I do makeup, I don't like to do like too pink. So it's like a more brown chocolatey on like a pink lip. It's really pretty. So I like that recently. Wait, how, how much is the Summer Fridays thing? I don't know. I can find it really fast. It's kind of expensive. I'm not going to lie. I've never I, heard of this brand until like this lip balm started getting popular. It's $23. Whoa. For how many fluid ounces or milliliters? I think it's only 0.5 or yeah, 0.5 ounces. <laughs> but it's well, cute. You know. <laughs> I had a discount, so that's why I got it. Fair enough. Yeah. I like those Sephora points. Oh my god, yeah. Um, do you wanna like intro a little bit into like adulting for you? Or like yeah. what it is to you? Okay. So adulting in my eyes and following in like my footsteps, I guess I would say from transitioning from a teen or young adult to an adult, I would say 
it's different for everybody because for sure. a lot of the times I might feel like I'm adulting more than others or lesser than others. And that's not really something you should be focused on. You should just focus on yourself because everybody has different lives. And we'll get into that later in a bigger detail. But for me, I don't know if I can define it yet because I haven't really, I don't think I have really ventured into adulting yet i mean yes i've got like the like college going on and a part-time job but i still live with my parents i haven't really gotten the opportunity to venture out and do my own thing i would say the one time recently this year that i've done something that's even remotely quote unquote adulting is going on a business trip by myself for like three days Mm -hmm. and it was away from my parents. I had to stay by myself in a hotel room, you know, find, get my own breakfast, lunch, dinner. And it was a little nerve wracking the first day. But after that, it felt really nice just to be on my own. Of course, I was paranoid because. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> no, that's so cool. So I feel like you definitely have more of a input on adulting. Because I think you definitely have, like you were going to mention, um, having the opportunity to become what an adult is on their own, building their own life. and For sure. I think, like, like you said, it's different for everybody, so it's hard to define it really what it is because adulting could even be booking your own doctor's appointment by yourself for the first time or going to the dentist without your mom having to tell you to do so. So it's like, there's like little steps, but it's like, whoa, like this is what adults do. I'm not a kid who has my mom or parent or guardian do it for me. And some people had to start early on, I feel like, doing all that stuff for themselves. So yeah, that's something we have to think about too. Um, in my personal experience, I feel like I've definitely like rushed into being an adult because I'm only 20 years old and I have a full-time job. I'm a full-time student in college and I'm married for almost one year now. So (laughs) it's like weird how that works. And also we have this podcast and that's something fun to do on the side, but it just feels like, whoa, like we got all this stuff going on because you're very similar. I mean, you have a job part-time, but basically full-time, like you work a lot. I know it like switches, but, and then you're also like a full-time student and you're in a really healthy, like long relationship and we have this podcast together. So it's like, even though maybe it's a little different, just how it is. And you know, the difference, like, oh, I live here with my husband and you live like with your parents, even though still like, it's not to compare, but I'm just saying like, you are already in adulting, the adulting world too. And like doing stuff like your business trips or pushing yourself to do your homework by yourself, not having your parents be like, oh, like, did you do your homework today? You know, so it's like, it is different for everybody. So it's just those little things that matter. And I feel like, honestly, we're in similar boats, you know, even though it may look different, it's still, we're still big adults out here at the age of 19 and 20. That's well said. Um, Like you were saying, and basically going off of what I was saying, um, like everybody looks different from the outside looking in and like how each person defines adulting. Um, Because some people might think adulting means being completely independent or um, having a child, being a mother, Mm -hmm. um, being successful in life. Like there's just a lot of things that, people consider what becoming a full adult is or a fully developed adult and like people have different maturity ages you know oh yeah and like you said like some people had no choice but to grow up faster because of their nurture or whatnot Mm -hmm. um and I feel like for me um I was given the opportunity to live with my parents Like, they didn't kick me out of my house or anything. I'm 19, so um, as they should be um, letting me stay, you know, I'm not going to say, like, oh, 
your parents are supposed to kick you out, but um, I'm grateful that they are allowing me to still take advantage of <laughs> free rent, free groceries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that's important because they are your parents and like at the age of 19, can you imagine paying for all that stuff on your own, being like working part-time, being a full-time student and not having like, like money come in. Cause for me, the reason why I think I'm doing okay financially is because we do have the military like to benefits in that regard. But if I, if we were just two part-time workers in college, there's no way I'd be able to afford that. That would be, I mean, I'm sure there are definitely people out there doing that. Yeah. But I feel like they're so young, they're more likely to make mistakes and then have to learn from it the hard way. And that's where my like heart feels so like sad and heavy because there are a lot of these young adults who don't have that guidance and they make Mm -hmm. these mistakes early on as low income uh, civilians. And it's just, it's like, it's like the system doesn't work out because it's like, keep the rich people rich. You know what I'm saying? Bro, honestly, no, I'm really glad you brought that to light because it really does play into like adulting. Like it's so hard to break that barrier of like, socioeconomic status and like i'm not saying you need to be rich but in this economy you gotta have money and it's hard for people to make it out here affording groceries that are going up every day i swear affording rent that's going up affording car payments gas insurance like i don't know how people do it if you're hustling out there good on you and i hope you're doing okay i feel like also in social media regarding to adulting there's a lot of um comparison online for sure like oh look at what i'm doing i'm 20 years old and i'm an entrepreneur already and i make millions every month or something like I that. Hate that and like they'll be like buy my course it, just to learn and become just like me and in a way, I feel like that develops some kind of, like, chemistry in someone's brain. Like, oh, you're telling me I don't have to, like, do physical labor. I could just, like, use my brain and become this entrepreneur like she is or she how he is or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it creates a false narrative because you can't believe everything you see online. Like that's like number one rule of internet, right? Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, like some people are so vulnerable, they'll hear whatever they want to hear. And then they invest in that. And sometimes it just doesn't work out for them. And like that just creates like another, (laughs) how do I, like, it's just depressing after like having that failure. A hundred percent. I think like how you said it is it's only a short snippet of people's life that we see on the internet. So when it comes to things like adulting and feeling like you don't compare to other people, like just try to have a closed mind or open mind about like, oh, wait, what I see on social media and maybe somebody portraying their life in a certain way, maybe it's totally backwards and their life sucks and they're struggling too, but they're just showing like, oh, millionaire girl, like bougie living in a nice downtown apartment but who knows what's true who knows what's not true like stuff like that you know kind of like how you were saying earlier on about um how people like define adulting like what success is it's different for everybody so success I kind of put as a part of adulting because when you reach like adulthood, that's when like you're creating your own life. And like, like <laughs> I feel like I'm going in a circle right now, but success can mean so many different things like happiness, um, love life, comfortableness, just being rich, et cetera, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. I think like not defining it, but kind of outlining what I view adulting as, I view adulting as paying bills. I view adulting as like doing something on your own or medical stuff, jobs, insurance. Like there's so many different aspects to it. 
And I feel like there's a lot of obstacles that are like put in the way of adulting, like transitioning into adulthood, because like we're kind of in this in between stage right now, right? Like we're getting ready to go to college to work like a full time job or something or whatever you may want to do in your future. And we're like in between like adulting where we're learning stuff. Some people it's different, but I feel like for a good chunk of us, it's like we're learning how to do these things on our own. There's new responsibilities. I guess like outlining them in three different aspects. So the first one's new responsibilities like bills, budgeting, buying homes, renting apartments, getting a job. The second is the amount of possibilities, like the unknown. Like you can legit do whatever you want as an adult. You know, like if you want to go buy something and you can afford it, like you can just go do that. You can just go into the middle of the street at night, yell, and then come back to your apartment. Like you can do whatever without facing consequences from your parents. Now, there might be other consequences, but not from like your (laughs) parents per se. And also the third thing is like social groups. I feel like when it comes to adulting, I don't know if this makes sense, but like figuring out like new friends, relationships, or like growing out of old friendships. I know we touched base on this a while in a few episodes ago, but like, I feel like this all just plays a role into like things that it can be obstacles for adulting. Like there's so many different things that branch off of adulting and it's just like, whoa, like it's very overwhelming. Yeah. I feel like when someone is going into adulthood, sometimes they get overwhelmed with like what they need to get done before they have to retire or something like that, you know? Yeah. And I feel like some people are focused on the wrong things and they'll need to just kind of like go through, go, go with the flow and like reach those different branches. Like you were saying. Something that I kind of wanted to do, like, obviously this is a safe place to talk about whatever, but also I think we want to hand out some advice that maybe we've experienced or have. So because of all these obstacles we face while transitioning into adulthood, here are some things that we can turn into more positive light to help navigate through being an adult, going through your 20s, whatever. Um, And like you just said about organization, um, I know you talked about this before in like the burnout episode about like having a schedule and making things like even like Google calendars. I just hopped on that and like made a whole Google calendar. Um, So I think like, because you have all these new responsibilities, like bills, budgeting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, trying to write things down, keep a schedule so you don't forget or like set goals, especially with the new year coming up, right? Like set goals for yourself yeah. for the next year. Not like cliche or anything, just be like, oh, I want to save X amount of money every month to save up for something or, oh, I probably should be saving for my retirement, right? Or something like that, you know? Um, I think that's like, you can take this craziness, but kind of contain it a little bit so it doesn't feel as overwhelming by setting up some organization, some structure in your life, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like I don't know a single adult who doesn't like have some type of like schedule written down or, yes. you know what I'm saying? Because like, like it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, everybody has a different way of doing it, of course. So you just got to find one that works for you. For sure. I agree. Um, something that I've been trying to get into more too. So whenever I was thinking about like kind of defining some things into adulting, I brought up the idea of amount of possibilities, like the unknowns with adulting. Like there's so much that you could do or couldn't do. Um, I think journaling kind of goes into organization, but I need to be better about it, but it is a good way to collect your thoughts or like really figure out like who you are at the core and what you want to do in this life, you know, because it's like as an adult, like, do you want to wake up every day, work a nine to five Monday through Friday, chill on the weekends, or do you want to not work, live in the country, do whatever, go frolic in the fields, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so it's just like really defining what you want out of this life and what you want to do. Because some people out here are hustlers and love to work, love to be at their work. Some don't like to work at all. Some just want to travel. Some want to do both. So it's like, you have to really think about what you want and what you want to get out of life. So when you become more of an adult doing these things and out of your parents' house or out of like wherever you're at or out of college, out of work, whatever you just need to kind of define. And by journaling, you can really collect these thoughts down because you might be thinking them in your head, 
but it might just go in and out. So you need to like write it down so you can hear it, visually see it, post it up on your wall, post it up somewhere, keep it in your backpack so you can look at it every day, something like that. Yeah. And I feel like that's like easier said than done for, for sure. some people yeah. that were for majority, at least I would think. So some tips I would say, cause I think I've kind of figured it out a little bit, but you know, it might change. You never know. Um, but right now I'm on track for reaching my goal, which is to be, um, um, what a software engineer. Anyways, um, what, what I did was I kind of went on like a loophole on YouTube, just looking up like day in the life of uh, working for Twitch or day in the life working Aww. for Facebook, day in the life. Like, cause like there are a lot of YouTubers who like to post what they do in the day. Obviously it might not be like spot on. They might be like kind of making it look aesthetic and stuff like that. Yeah. So but they do go into like talking about benefits and like their privileges within working in like the tech environment. And that's what I really liked. Um, I feel like a lot of the tech industry, you either have like really bad uh, environments or really good environments. I heard good thing about Twitch and Microsoft and Google and Apple, but I heard really bad stuff about um, gaming companies. I think that's a really good point because there is like, power and manifestation so you watch those videos and you're like i want to be a software engineer for google or xyz company whatever and like you see somebody doing that and then you learn more about the company and you're like oh this is fitting for me because it's hard to shadow people when you don't have that connection but you yeah. go to the internet like you said research and then be like this is the job i want you post it up you manifest that you think about it write it down and things will come to you good karma exists you know? Yeah. Um, I think one thing that I used to do, because this is when I wanted to be an orthodontist. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was like a year ago. And then I changed or like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I got a journal and I did a bunch of research on it. I was like, how many years do I need to do? What, what classes do I need to take? What is the best school? And then I looked up, this might be a little, little trigger warning in the beginning here. Um, I looked up um, mental health within the uh, dental in industry and it is number two in suicide rates so I was like you know what I'm not doing so swell in my mental health so I'm just gonna back away and pick something else because if I really wanted to do that in the future I could always go back to school I kind of like I, I try to make it a habit of if you fail at something once, like it's not the end of the world. Like Mikhail likes to say, we're on a floating rock. <laughs> we get plenty of chances. Exactly. Um, yeah, of course, money is always an issue, but that's part of adulting, really. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's dealing with it. So maybe we can go into budgeting one day. That would be cool. I would like that. Because I'm kind of new to it. Like, you know, like financing or budgeting, like when you're in high school, very different from when you're an adult. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that'd be a good episode because I feel like both of us have a good amount of tips. And because we're like learning new things about like the budgeting world and like how to manage money, we could share our bad stories, like how do I want to I've got a like lot we of can those. share <laughs> like shopping addictions or <laughs> impulsive purchases and how we try to budget that correctly um yeah. we hope you guys enjoyed this episode I think this is episode nine yeah episode what? nine. Oh my gosh well it's yeah so nice to have been I mean if we don't do so well it's okay because it's literally just fun to talk yeah I agree so it's like hobby yeah and we appreciate you guys who listen this far or are keeping up with our new episodes thank you for all the love and support we hope you guys enjoyed episode nine see you next week see ya